Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word Community and I want to welcome all of you that are joining us this Thursday, April 22nd, to do Lexio Divina to Pray with Sacred Scripture. For the readings of this Thursday, we will read Acts of the Apostles. Today is chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 66 and the Gospel is from St. John, chapter 6, verses 44 to 51. We can start the reading of the Word of God for this Thursday. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jer Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace Queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard the official reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The official replied, How can I? unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip and get, and get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before each shearer, so he does not open his mouth. And his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with your whole heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip, 
found himself in Azotus. And as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In these verses of chapter 8, we see Philip evangelizing, proclaiming the good news to a eunuch, to an Ethiopian eunuch, to a pagan man. So the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up, go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So, interesting. The angel only said where he needed to go. But the angel did not say, you will find a chariot, you will find a man reading Isaiah, and you are to explain Isaiah to him, to baptize him and to make him a disciple of Christ. The angel did not say that. The angel only directed Philip. And reading this passage, we can ask, are we easily guided by the angels of God and by the Holy Spirit? Or if we were in the place of Philip, we were to ask so many questions. Why should I go? Why there? Why not other place? And, and go and on and on with questions. We see here that Philip was open to the Lord, open to whatever was to come his way, open to evangelize in any way that was asked of him. Philip did not ask any questions. He just went. And it says it is a wilderness road. So it maybe for Philip it was weird. Why should I do this? Why should I go to this wilderness road? Who will be there? But then he met this man. That although he was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official, of the queen of the Ethiopia, this man was searching for the truth, searching for light. And when Philip heard it, he was ready to say, do you want to know more? Do you know what you are reading? So Philip proposed a, a Bible study. He proposed that this man would, could learn more about sacred scripture. It's so beautiful to see here how Philip was open, but how this Ethiopian was open to receive. Because with the explanation of Philip, he believed in Christ and he was baptized. So we can ask today, am I open to the action of the Lord in my life? If I was in the position of Philip or this Ethiopian court official, would I be so ready to welcome the message of conversion, the message of, of Jesus Christ, or I would be putting like questions unending, a question and questioning and questioning and questioning and saying, why me, Lord? We are like that. But with the example of Philip and the eunuch, we can see like these two men open to God's action and to God's providence in their lives. The Responsorial Psalm today, Psalm 66, says, Bless our God, all, all, peop all peoples. Let the sound of His praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what He has done for me. I cried aloud to Him, and He was extolled with my tongue. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayers or removed his steadfast love from me. Blessed be God. God, hear our prayers. Everything, every prayer that we bring to him, everything that we say to him, he listens to us. He is ready to hear us. He has not rejected my prayers or removed his steadfast love from me. His steadfast love for us, for each one of us, endures forever. The Gospel today from St. John, chapter 6, verses 44 to 51 says, Those who had been fed by the five loaves followed Jesus to the other side of the lake and asked Him for a sign that they should believe in Him. Jesus said to them, No one can come to me 
unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the bread of life. So we are in chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. John. This beautiful chapter, one of the most famous chapter in the Bible. I am the bread of life. This is the discourse of the bread of life. Jesus is saying that he is the bread of life and whoever goes to him will have eternal life. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. Whoever believes has eternal life. And we can see that in the life of this eunuch, this pagan man. He believed in the proclamation of Jesus Christ that Philip did. Philip proclaimed that Jesus was this lamb that was the slaughter that died and that resurrected for all of us. And this eunuch man believed. That's why he has eternal life. And Jesus continues, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. How is our belief in the Eucharist? How is our belief that Jesus is the bread of life? He wanted to be with us forever, so he remained with us. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. From heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. We have this grace of daily Mass in the places that in our times still there is daily Mass. We are fed by the holy body and blood of our Lord. And through the Eucharist, we receive eternal life. The bread that we'll give for the, li for, of, for the life of the world is my flesh. We need to believe in the presence and the strength of the body and blood of Christ. He's present. He is among us, and He wants to be our food, food for the journey. He wants to be what is strengthened and nourishes us and nourishes our soul. May we, like Philip and this eunuch, be fed and be strengthened by the Holy Eucharist, by the body and blood of our Lord. May He bless us, and may the Eucharist be, the, be this food for the journey for all of us. Amen.